With so many cults out there, it can be really difficult to find the right one for you. Well, luckily, we've got a game that will help you discover who you would like to devote your soul to. For eternity. In the game, you're the leader of the cult on the mission to spread the word of your god. To win the game, and rule the souls and minds of millions, you must build five altars, recruit four fanatical mobs, or perform your summoning ritual twice. To set up the game, you place the game board in the middle of your table, then shuffle each deck of cards. Place the miracle deck face down in the ruins. Next, place the intrigue cards in the nobility district. Place the license deck on one of the slots in the palace. Draw three cards from this deck and place them face up in the other three slots in the same location. Allow each player to choose a color and provide them with two followers, the patriarch, the three priest tokens of strengths one, two, and three, all in this chosen color. Each cult also starts with five gold coins donated by their puppets, the adherents. All of the rest of the gold coins, priests, and followers are placed in a general reserve. Then, each player will choose their cult, either by random or by some sort of agreement. Each god has a variety of abilities to speak to you and your religious proclivities. For example, Anubis's abilities allow you to sacrifice your priests to gain followers, or sacrifice your followers to make your priests stronger. Cthulhu allows you to sacrifice your priests to make your other priests stronger, or destroy your free priests in exchange for an altar. They're pretty big on the sacrificing. To activate the dark side of your god and awaken their might, players perform their summoning ritual at the Rift of Darkness location. The card then flips over, revealing stronger abilities. If you perform the summoning ritual a second time, you bring your mighty deity to this mortal plane and win. Finally, the first player is decided by the cultist with the highest divine might on their sheet. Gameplay is broken up into two phases, the intention phase and the resolution phase. The intention phase involves cultists spending their priests to spread their cult's influence, collect alms, pay for miracles, rouse angry mobs, build altars, and recruit followers to their cause. During your turn, you may place a priest on the location available to you or pass. The more followers of your cult, the more locations available to you in the Eternal City. Each location has a special benefit available to the cult with the most influence. The first row allows you to win resources or pay to win future locations. Once you have at least one follower, you have now unlocked the second tier of the Eternal City, where you can gain the Supremacy card, gain or level up priests, or gain coins. When you own the Supremacy card, your Patriarch gets plus seven to its strength. In the following round after gaining the Supremacy card, you may use one of its effects. Once you have three followers, you can begin to build altars, give your priests greater strength, or amass yet more followers. For a cost, of course. Once you have five followers, you're in the big leagues. You have the opportunity to take license cards or entry cards at no cost. When you have at least seven followers, it's game time. You can lose two followers to gain one fanatical mob, or perform the summoning if you have enough influence in the Rift of Darkness. Priests are placed one at a time, starting with the first player and then going clockwise. The first three priests you place are free. Afterwards, players must lose a follower to place a priest. If you choose to pass and have the required number of fanatical mobs, you immediately gain the benefit of one location. Additionally, you may perform an unlimited number of deals, including selling intrigue cards from your hand or purchasing face-up license cards from the palace. The license cards on offer can either be bought with coins or gained for free at the palace location. Each license card grants its owner a unique, permanent ability and increases the strength of their patriarch. License cards are never put into your hand. Whenever you gain one, it's placed face up in front of you. They can allow you to place a higher number of priests for free, allow you to win locations even if you come in second place, provide you access to locations you couldn't otherwise access, and allow you to tax players for placing in certain locations. After each player has passed, the resolution phase begins. During this phase, each active location is resolved from 1 to 13. Starting from the first player and going clockwise, players may play one miracle card or entry card from their hand, or use one of their cult abilities in the active location. The miracle cards allow you to improve your own situation by relocating your priests, increasing your influence, building altars, gaining followers, coins, and fanatical mobs. Entry cards provide you with multiple ways to hinder your opponents, such as forcing them to lose followers, mobs, or altars, give you their cards or coins, 
or remove them from a location. You can also sell these cards for coin. The cult with the most influence gains the benefit of the location. Any other cults who are present in the location gain the coins as alms. Influence is based on the power of the priests and altars there. A patriarch is as powerful as the number of followers in their cult, combined with any license cards or the supremacy card. Once a location with priests has been resolved, all cults remove their priests and return them to each player's supply where they become free again. Once all locations have been resolved in this manner, the resolution phase is over. If at the end of the resolution phase, a cult has four fanatical mobs, five altars, or has performed their summoning ritual twice, they chose the right god. If you want to check out Cult for yourself, you can pledge for the game on our Kickstarter, or get a taste of it through the virtual tabletop of tabletopia.com. As you can see, Cult gives you all of the tools to find the god that's right for you and help them take over the world. Thanks for watching. Who knew that fighting for the souls of humanity would be so much fun?